the uh, far end of the field. I'm not sure what that was for. I think that was just a marker or something, it looks like. Oh, no, false start. You know, I, they, we, the Knights were getting so much penetration from the ends, from like Silas Ward. Uh, it was a smart adjustment by Bethel to start running up the middle. And uh, that's that was working for a little while. Throw up the middle. It's picked off. Going the other way. It's Rouse at the 50, 45, 40. Rouse down the sideline. Knocked out of bounds at the 35-yard line. That night secondary is impressive, folks. Nate Rouse making another play. The young man now has a... Well, I guess the passing touchdown got called back, but now the rushing touchdown, a, a penalized passing touchdown, and an interception there. Just an incredible ball game for, the, for the, the quarterback, the junior, already here in the first quarter, just 10 minutes into this one. First down here for the Knights, ball on the 39-yard line. Rouse has trips to his left, one to the right, running back in the formation. He takes a snap, hands off up the middle. Nothing there for the Knights. Haven't really seen a positive running play yet for the Knights. No. They were really kind of gifted that field position thanks to the blocked punt on the first drive. And then Luke Olson's punt return set them up on that second drive. But not a lot of success. Uh. We're going to jump over now to the 2A3 matchup between the Purcell Dragons playing the number one ranked Washington Warriors. The Dragons are coached by Tracy Scott with a record this year of 3-4, and four, losing to Community Christian last week. The Washington Warriors are coached by Brad Beller with a record this year of 7-0, and oh, beating Lindsay last week 42-6. We also have a score update for you in the Hinton-Minko game at the end of the first quarter. Hinton leads 6-0. Is that something the last two weeks that we've, I know early in the season we struggled, struggled, struggled with it. Hadn't had, had, had that Bruce now. You came back, in. Kyle. You <laughs> came back. It's my fault. Let's Sorry. put it all together. Sorry, you came back. First and 10 on the 11. As Alexander motions to the right. Handoff goes to the right. Scott looking for blockers. Breaks a tackle and near the goal line. Now he just took a guy to the fence. <laughs> and he took offense to that. Dad jokes. <laughs> you got a half chuckle out of that one. Too back. It's pretty good. You got to think you see some uh, another dose of Cole Scott right here. Trying to get his second touchdown in the evening. It does go to Cole Scott. Tries to keep the legs moving, but four defenders for the Dragons are there. He didn't read that hole right. He he cut it back to the to the left, yeah. and all of his we pulled from that side. Yeah. To cut this wall out here. So can... Third down and about one from the two. Definitely four down territory here for the Warriors. Another high snap. Controls over, get it, and Cole Scott walks in for the touchdown. We're going to jump over now to the A5 matchup between the number four ranked Tonkawa Buccaneers at the number five ranked Hominy Bucks. Both teams are undefeated going into this game. Number 14, PK Good. Good for a Hominy Buck. 20-yard touchdown pass. Good play design that time. Fake the ball. To the running back that time and hit Tyndale out in the flats. After that hominy score, we're going to jump over to the other Squirtle game of the week, the 2A Chandler Lions versus the 2A Jones Longhorns. The Lions are 5-2 and two on the season, with the Longhorns being 4-3. and three. Ben, his first interception of the season, and now it's third and long for the Horns. There was some miscommunication between the quarterback and the uh, wide receiver on that play, and, and Rickner, I think, was looking for the receiver. Couldn't believe that there was no one in the area, and that ball was coming right to him. Aren't you kind of uh, uh, pretty uh, fluent on the haunted houses? Is there any good haunted houses in this area? Uh, no. I would, well, I'm sure that you could probably find something to scare you out here. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, there's, no, I, I'm not sure on, on the haunted houses. Third down at 13, back to throw is Creasy. Guns it over the middle, first down, and it's dropped, incomplete. 
It was a first down at the 35-yard line. Mason Temple to the sophomore had it in his paws, and he dropped it. That was a bullet. I, mean, oh. I just think it just got there in a hurry. I mean, that he loaded up and threw that thing, and uh, he may have been expecting the change up, and he got the eater. Goodness gracious. Wide open at the 35-yard line. They would have converted another opportunity of third or fourth and double digits. Instead, they'll punt for the second time with Creighton Jones. He straddles the 35-yard tw- line. Lions look like they might try to come after it with 201. Jumping on over to the District A3 game, we have the Hinton Comets at the Minko Bulldogs. The Bulldogs being 5-1 and one this season, beating CHA last week, and the Comets being 4-3, and three, losing to Crescent. I think that's a smart decision. And I think that's a good move there. Good job by coach, the coaching staff to kind of say, all right, I see what you're trying to do. We'll, we'll move some people around. And so I think he's going to call timeout. That, put, that, was, uh, that was enough of a move right there for them to make them stop, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Um, but number 10 is too good. We yeah. We're going to have to have McMurtry on him yeah. right there. Yeah, and so I think good move. Eight minutes, seven seconds. Comets are going to take a timeout. Man, Cameron, what do they need to do here? How, defensively, they're going to have to get a stop here. What do they do to get a stop? Uh, I think it I think it comes down to the line. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. I think it comes down to the line here. Are they going to get a good push and or get to the quarterback for the throw or what? Yeah, I, I think so, yeah. Yeah, what are you thinking, Mr. Sims? What do you think the Comets are going to try to do right here on third and long? Well, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see him just try to run the ball and get to a fourth and short again. Yeah. Uh, and then and then throw the ball on fourth down. Uh, I think they might were – I think they were planning on throwing the ball there until they moved McMurtry yeah. over there. That seemed to really mess with them a little bit. They, yeah. That's why they took the timeout. The coach I, definitely hesitated right there. I look forward there. to run the football, so I think Cameron is exactly right. That defensive line has really got to step up here and try to keep – Keep that run contained. Yeah, every pass has been a quick pass. It has he hadn't been holding on the ball very long. He's getting it out of his hands. And so a pass rush is tough to do when you get it out that quick. And so maybe, maybe instead of really coming after him on a pass rush, maybe you just throw your hands up in the air yeah. and see if you can knock it down I maybe so. on those passes. But I'm with you. I think they might run it right here with third and seven. And so here come the Bulldogs, the fans trying to get into it, the student section trying to get it going. Third down and seven. They're going to start in the pistol formation. They've got two receivers wide, double tight end. And he's going to keep it. He's looking to throw it. Uh, And he's got it. Makes McMurtry miss. Nest finally catches up to him, brings him down at about the eight-yard line. And a uh, little double move there made it. He went in. He went to the out pattern and then moved back into the inside, and that was enough to get open. Nice route by number ten, and so they're all the way down to the first and goal on the eight yard line. And so another big first down by the Comets as they methodically go down the field again. So running back beside the quarterback. He's going to throw it. And no, he, oh, he drops it. He drops it. And it looks like Hinton come up with it. Man, it hit off of Ashton yeah, Taylor's it, it, uh, knee, and he could, they just couldn't come up with it. One of the linemen for the Comets able to pick it up. It will be a loss. Oh, man, almost that was almost an yeah, opportunity. It was. And and that's the difference is sometimes in game here. The Comets had a turnover. They were able to get the ball right there the Bulldogs had a chance and did not come up with it that's what we were talking about can you make the play when it's time to happen and so to be second and goal on the 15 yard line for the Comets and we're down to six minutes 55 seconds in this half there's the motion man he's going to hand it to him he's trying to find something outside oh, nice tackle by Carson Little John Little John like a missile and that's going to be another loss yeah, that's a big loss there. It's going to be third and uh, – It's going to be third and goal on the 16-yard line. Yeah, that's, that's huge, huge play. And so this got interesting right there. It was a good job by McMahon on that first down play. He wanted to throw it over there on McMahon. Yeah, and, and McMahon was on that out pattern, and uh, he he had to put it – ball, kind of tried to put it in his pocket and run with it, and that's when he dropped it. And so, man, that turned out big. Going to have to cover number 10 here in the next two plays, Pastor Mike. It's going to be huge to cover yeah. number 10. I can't complain, catch the football, make some So they're going to call another timeout here with wow. six minutes and seven seconds. 
We're going to jump on over to the 2A2 matchup between the Bethel Wildcats, coached by Joey Ginn this year, against the Crossings Christian Knights, coached by Jonathan Keithley. And it's like you want to get the ball in your playmaker's hands as quickly as possible and then let them do the rest. From the shotgun here, takes a snap. Quarterback power up the middle once again. Rouse bounces it outside again, out to the 15. Powers down a man at around the 14, 13 yard line, and he's going to set up a third down and very short for the Knights. That's that same play from the touchdown earlier, the first drive of the game, and I love that play. It's uh, well, well designed. Absolutely, and Rouse is running hard tonight. Got to put the ball in his hands. He's had multiple strong plays now, strong momentum plays for this Knights team on offense and defense. Third down and five, maybe just a few yards short. Two to the right, one to the left from the shotgun. Here is Rouse. And the Knights are going to take a timeout. And they're going to go three wide. Well, we've got to be disru disruptive. No quarterback by himself. Got to be disruptive with number one here. He's going to keep it. He throws it over the middle. Oh my He's got it. Touchdown Comets. That was. Uh... So the tight end just snuck out. And he was able to find him. And that'll make it 12 to 0. And this half not going the way of the Bulldogs right now. No. No, it's not. And uh, we're going to have to score on this series, Pastor Mike. Because, yeah. you know, he didn't get the ball coming out of halftime. And, and we, a game like this, with the clock control that Hinton is having and the success of that. We're going to have limited opportunities to score here. Yeah, that's exactly it. And so got to make the most of it. They're going to go for two here. So they're going to be – got two running backs, one beside, one behind. They're going to throw the ball. Good job by and number 12. And he misses 12. it. Good Three job missed. by Nest. And so – Onto the field after the timeout. Ayala and Olsen out to the left. Believe that's Krotz alone on the right side of the field. Meek on the left side of the line here, takes a snap, hands off, looking for room on the outside, swallowed up there. Walraven, no room to work on the outside. Then they tried. They tried to get it to the, to the outside and get Walraven in space, but that Wildcat line got a good push. Yeah, they had two or three guys in the backfield, so um, I, think we, I think we fell asleep on the line there from that play for some reason. To Caden Leslie. Caden Leslie on to kick this field goal here. Might be a flag. It's 37 yarder. About 37 yards. That's a tough kick for Leslie. That's a long one. 37 is no joke for any any high school team here. And they believe he can hit it. Snap is up. Hold is down. And the kick is... Right down Money. the middle. That one was good from at least 10 more yards there. Impressive, impressive kick there yeah. from Caden Leslie. Wow. What a play. I like the idea of just getting points on the board. Their defense is carrying their team. So, Jumping over to 3A1, the Kingfisher Yellow Jackets versus the McLeod Redskins. All right, so another fruitless possession for the Jackets. Second time it's been a turnover on downs. Stalled twice for knee pads. So 7-18 to go in the half. The Redskins have it for the third time. They're at their own 26. Should have been a very good job by Burnham. Thought the, I thought the uh, running back left a little early right there, but. They got him for holding, so that'll back him up 10 yards, make it third and long. Not only is it high, it's coming in pretty hot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Got a little speed to it. Yeah. Let's see a little RPO right here. A new running back in, Hudson Howard. 
Not to be confused with Henry Hudson's cow. Made that mistake last week. <laughs> Speedy tailback lines up behind Cantrell. They send Morris in motion. Better snap this time. Cantrell looking throw. Steps up in the pocket. Is looking deep. He's got a receiver. And it's Mason Singletary. Touchdown, Warriors. Great ball right there. Just step up in the pocket. Mason has... Jumping over to the Hinton Comets, who are 4-3 and three this season, versus the Minko Bulldogs, who are 5-1. and one. This is a district game in District A3. We, we have got to... Uh... Yeah, they're, the linebackers are just coming right down north and south. They are not afraid of the pass. Oh, he took too long. Interception. And so going to have to try to tackle him. He's going to... He's finally hit. Mullinax tackles him at about the three-yard line. And so another overthrown ball. Every pass so far has been overthrown. He went to the deep man, to the little John. It looked like Hughes was open on the, on the inside. He went to the outside, went to the long man. The short man was open, and he overthrew him. And little John didn't even go up for it. And the defensive back was able to catch it no problem and ran it all the way down to the three-yard line. And this is this has gone the wrong way quickly. You can see four minutes, seventeen seconds left, and this could get ugly. Yeah, if we're, we continue we're this way. Ourself out of this thing here is what's going to happen. And so we <laughs> being three scores down is not where we want to be. I'll just say that. I don't have to say it. Somebody else yeah, can say. Quarterback, it. there he is. Oh, there's Ashton Taylor. Nice tackle right there. It's going to make it a loss. So it's going to be second and goal on the four yard line. Ashton Taylor just dove through and just beasted his way through that offensive line and got the stop so it'll be four, uh, second and goal on the four yard line and once again Hinton just taking their time as the clock rolls in the pistol no receivers out there. Everybody on the line. He's going to hand it off. He's met quickly, and he's backed up. That was Hunter Mullinax. Boy, he's had a good game so far. He's got a yeah. lot of tackles. In fact, he saved that touchdown right there. Comets looked like they were going to get in, and Mullinax came out of nowhere and just, just, just ran over him at the three-yard line so he couldn't get to the end zone. And now it's third and goal on the five-yard line. Backed him up again. And so Molinax, the senior, playing his heart out there, trying to get going, trying to do something. Not ducking their heads. Might watch for the quick slant Yeah, out on the far good. side. He's going to run it straight up the middle. There's Molinax again, and he gets him down. And it's going to be about the three-yard line. It's going to be fourth and goal on the three-yard line. Hunter Molinax doing it all himself. He just ripped through that defensive line. He did. He's a big boy, big, strong boy, and uh, we need Hunter Mullinax to do that right now. Yeah, that's what we need right now. And so fourth and goal, defense trying to step up on the three-yard line. Let's see what they decide to do. Haven't got anything on these three runs. They're going to call timeout. And that's going to be Miko. Oh, no, Hinton calls their last timeout, and they're going to talk over it again. Every time they've called a timeout, they've thrown the ball. They do. Uh, our run defense has been pretty solid. Our pass defense has been iffy. Uh, the, the, the turnovers are the difference in this football game right now. Yeah. You know, and and uh, if we don't clean up the middle, kind of. Gains about five yards. It'll be a third and five from the 49-yard line. Langston Smith lining up a wide receiver there in like a slot position next to Kevin. And it will be pass to Kevin. Cuts in the middle, makes another guy miss, but gains about a yard. So it'll be a fourth and four from the 50-yard line. 
And the punt team looks like they're coming on. A surprising decision, but the Eagles really haven't, haven't done anything on fourth down today. I mean, it hasn't been pretty on fourth down. So I don't, I don't blame the decision unless this is a fake. Oh, it is. He's lined up super close. I, oh, they ran. Oh, they ran the leper. The, I forget what the play's called. But, Jessen, they ran that versus OCS. I forget what the play's called. But, basically, they snap it to Jessen. He fakes the handoff to Seabass, like, underneath. And then he takes it himself. And Jessen... His first down and 10 for the Bulldogs. Unbelievably it, it effort uh, right there. I felt like if they scored that third touchdown, we, it's going to be hard to win. It's a little bit easier to win just being down two scores than three. Well, this is on that. the one-yard line, barely. Yeah. This is on the half-yard line. So, so no turnovers are allowed yeah. either. Yeah. Could be a get, Don't want to give up a safety Don't want a either. safety either because you're going to kick it right back to him with two minutes and ten yeah. seconds. They've got the big package in, two receivers. Tried to get him offside. They, they did. We'll see who they call it on. No, it's on us. And that's okay. It doesn't even go anywhere. Yeah. That back of the ball is literally on the goal line. So. Yeah. <laughs> he just touched it. He just picked it up, put it yeah. back down. <laughs> so no no big deal there. No big deal. They were trying to get the offsides on them, though. Yeah. Do the old faithful, and it didn't. Uh, wrong guy jumped. And so try it again. He's going to hand it off. He's got some room, and that's Carruth. Jake Carruth gets all the way to the eight-yard line. And that's a nice sighting to see Jake Carruth. There was just for a hair, I thought he might break that. <laughs> he, it, that was an impressive little run. Boy, nice to have him back. It is. And get a little job. breather room. So second down and two. You got Gage uh, Payton there blocking as well. And I, I think the there's another oh. run. He's got it again, and he's going to get all the way to the 24 yard line. And Jake Carruth. We're going to switch over to the 2A2 matchup between the Chandler Lions and the Jones Longhorns. All right. 7 17 to play in the first half, and Jones is on the march trying to take a three score advantage out of the gun. They hand it off, and not much doing as the ball carrier is down inside the 25 to the 24, and they'll finally push him down. I do like Jones' look, the black and green. I just do not like how difficult it is to read the numbers. Well, I will give Jones this. They won the battle of the uh, of the run through tonight with their logo printed on this big uh, balloon that they've got. That's that was amazing. It is a cool logo. They decided they didn't want to have the traditional Longhorn look like the University of Well, we won't call it. Second down and eight at the twenty four yard line. Hand off straight ahead and breaking tackles, getting close to the twenty one yard line. Three down to the 21, brings up third down and five. That was a physical run. Slant right here, you think? It's, it's, been, it's been their play of choice on third down. It's worked for them quite a bit. Uh, again, let's see what the the linebackers of the Lions do. Uh, they're not necessarily in the formation for the slant here. They do have a tight end to the right side that could get into that spot again. Six minutes to play, so we're halfway through the second quarter. 13-0 Jones, and they're just outside the red zone. They fake the handoff to throw it out right, and a good tackle that time as the receiver will not get to the first down marker. Ethan Manning was the first one to get him in his grasp. He was able to struggle free for another couple of yards, but it stopped just short, and it's going to bring up fourth down and two. You know, that's not a bad play. I, let's see what they try to decide here. I'm sure to go for it. But they did pick up a couple of yards, which makes it a little easier to pick up the fourth down here. But running the football has not been easy for Jones tonight. The Chandler defensive front is really winning a lot of individual battles along the line of scrimmage. So uh, Coach Witt has certainly a decision to make on what play to call here. I think it's an easy decision. It would be a 35-yarder for a kicker that's yet to attempt a field goal. Give straight ahead. First down and more as there was a gaping hole behind left guard, and they blast down to the 11-yard line, a gain of seven. They only needed three. Yeah, that's the most successful run play that they've had tonight, and that's the second fourth down conversion of the game for Jones. And Chandler right now facing potential of being down three scores. Mason Templeton is going to bring the play in. And look how much time, Mark, this drive has taken off the second quarter clock. That Chandler defense, who has a lot of guys going both ways, starting to put their hands on their hips a little bit. 
First down and goal to go. Line of scrimmage at the 12-yard line officially. Creasy gives it straight ahead again and not much doing a good tackle that time. Staying low was Jeremy Galbraith to stop the ball carrier for a yard gain to the 11. Going to have to earn it. Not coming easy on the ground. This will be the 10th play of the Longhorn Drive with 4.15 to play. Here in the second quarter, see the score in the lower left of your screen, 13 nothing Jones. These schools separated by just 28 miles. I ask you, are they each other's biggest rivals? We'll get your answer in just a moment. Second down and goal to go. Fake the handoff. They'll throw over the middle of the ball's juggled incomplete to the end zone. It's a good pass, and uh, the receiver just couldn't haul it in. Couldn't. I, I would go Chandler and Stroud. That's uh, the game, the Lincoln County War that's kicked off the seasons for many, many, many years. Chandler's getting bigger. Stroud's kind of getting a little smaller. Uh, but I'm sure that that rivalry would continue to uh, to be played. And then, I don't know, Jones, you know, I would say Luther and Jones are not very far apart. Been in, about, in the same class for a, a good number of years. Interesting link between the two towns' names. I'll tell you in a minute. Third down and goal to go. Threw out left. Ball caught at the five-yard line. And a good tackle that time by Ty Garver. Good to see him back out there after being shaken up on the last play. Okay, a guy named Luther named this town Jones for one of his body, uh, uh, buddies. Isn't that right? Yeah, and that, that, that's correct. Now, I'm not sure. It, it may be coincidence on the Luther. Well, it would be a heck of a coincidence. On the Luther name, I'm not sure if that town, but the two guys were friends. Uh, and, yes, so it, that uh, we'll give you a little history lesson later. Fourth down and goal to go. The ball at the six-yard line with 3.17 to play. And Mark is walking in front of us in his costume and a timeout <laughs> on the field. 13 nothing. We're back after these messages on Squirtle. There's a second T-Rex in the house. It's time to stop working. Is wanting to get an explanation. As they threw the flag and then waved it off. If you're just joining us, Tonkawa took an early lead, a one-yard run by Cam Jackson. How many tied it up on their next drive? A 20-yard touchdown pass from Jackson Woods to TK Sutton of 20 yards. Tonkawa grabbed the lead back, a 53-yard run by Blake Bristow, led 14 to seven, and then how many with the answer? A one-yard touchdown run by Jackson Woods. They went for two after a penalty. Gave him an extra yard and a half to and they took the penalty and scored from a yard and a half for the two-point conversion to grab the 15-14 to 14 lead. And that is where we stand. Number one, Ringling is... Welcome back here to Jones. 13-0 late first half. Longhorns have Chase Pitts in the backfield, offset to the left of Clayton Creasy. They'll go for it on fourth down and from the five. Hand off to Pitts, and he's hit and did not get there. They're going to stop him at the one-yard line. But it will be a first down. I'm sorry, it was not goal to go. It's first down now and goal to go. And, again, on fourth and short marks, some really good run blocking up front. Yeah, that's the third fourth down conversion for Jones. That's big in this game. Picks up five. It's first and goal to go at the one-yard line. Creasy hands it off, and it's a touchdown. It wasn't Creasy. I believe it was Chase Pitts out of the Wildcat, and he did not keep it. And it's a touchdown. And it's 20 to 9. We're going to jump on over to our Class B matchup between the OBA Trojans and the Garber Wolverines. If I'm a betting man, I would say this is probably four down territory for OBA. So you have two plays to get nine yards here as they don't seem likely to punt with a 32 point lead and on their side of, and on the Garber side of the 50 yard line. So Cheatham in motion, passing the flats. Nunez gets a block. Cheatham makes a man miss and he's gone. That's a touchdown for OBA. Cheatham 10 5. Touchdown Trojans. Another short swing pass to Judd Cheatham. Harry Nunez with an awesome spring block. Spring block. That. That play was just delicious as it went all the way to the end zone for six for OBA. So Judge Cheatham with another long play for a touchdown, making the score OBA 40, or OBA 38, sorry, taking for granted the two-point conversion. My apologies. OBA 38, Garber 0 as Bodie Boyson trots in 
to the huddle to bring in the play for the two-point conversion. So they break the huddle. Nunez wide to the far side of the field. Ian Easton in the slot. Judd Cheatham at running back. They're going to hand it off to Cheatham. It's going to be another reverse play to Nunez. Boyson blocking. Nunez strolls into the end zone. Two-point conversion is good. Now I can say it. OBA 40, Garber 0. Six minutes, 30 seconds left in the second quarter. And at this point, OBA now dangerously close to ending this thing really early. Big hole. There was, <laughs> there was nobody within 15 yards either side of him. Like you said, just settled in, found, found a little pocket right there and set in it. And six hit him right there over the middle. Big pickup for the, for the Dragons. Looks like a quarterback draw about to happen. Now he throws it over the middle and almost picked off again. Three Warriors in the area. I think three Warriors were looking to take somebody's head off and they didn't see the ball bounce up. Yeah. Second down and 10 for the Dragon. Galleon Guys, it's run we're two minutes to halftime. Yeah. This last two minutes might take a while. More pressure being brought. Again, pop pass. This time goes to Tarango. Good blocking on the edge there this time by Hill. About seven yard gain makes it third and three. We're going to go now to our other Scordal game of the week, the Class A District 5 matchup between the number four ranked Tonkawa Buccaneers, who are undefeated on the season, coached by Mike Kirtley, versus the Hominy Bucks, who are ranked five in Class A, coached by Caleb Christian, also undefeated in the season. We also have a halftime score update for you in the Class A District 3 matchup between the Hinton Comets and the Minko Bulldogs. That score at half is Hinton leading 12 to 0. Five. Stops the clock with 35 seconds to play. You get out of bounds at the 38, picking up five. A gain of five. Second five upcoming. Tuggawas defense strung it out pretty good. That time kept him from cutting them all up. Jackson Woods, 17 carries, 106 yards rushing in the first half of this one. He's 11 yards shy of 1,000 yards rushing on the season, his junior season. Second and five. To throw, Woods going deep toward the end zone. And they're going to throw the flag for P.I. as Sutton was tackled. I don't think Sutton was going to run under that one, but he was tackled inside the five-yard line. Well, at least it's not like the NFL would you get it on the spot, spot yeah. penalty. Tyler Looper was who they threw the flag on. So this will be a 15-yard penalty from the 38 to put it down around the 23 or so with 29 seconds to play. So first down and 10 from the 23. Now, number one team in Class B is the Oklahoma Bible Academy Trojans, and they are rolling Garber 40 to nothing now. They're very impressive. I saw them last week. Woods to the end zone, one-on-one -on -one coverage, and trying to reel it in as Blaine Hipp. It's incomplete, and on the coverage that time was Tyler Looper. Jackson Woods' pass is incomplete. Pass was intended for number one, Blaine Hipp. For Jackson Woods, he had complete. We're going to jump now to the matchup between the Hennessy Eagles and the Alva Goldbugs. Ooh. First and 10 from the 33. Two receivers at the bottom, Seth and Weston. And they're going to throw it that way. The fake screen to Weston, the deep ball to Seth. Wow! What a catch, Seth Simonek! Oh, down at the one-yard line. This might be the third rushing touchdown for Titan. What a catch. 
a fake screen to Western, and then they just heaved it up to Seth. And he makes a lot of catches like that. I mean, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like he makes those catches more often than he does on, like, screens and slants. He did not get in on the quarterback keep. It's almost like, you know, he is, he's just better when it's a tougher catch. Which, I mean, hey, I'd, I'd take that over a receiver that can't catch anything on a one-on-one. -on -one. And Titan stops short again. Oh, no, he did. Okay, never mind. I'm sorry. He did get in. So, touchdown for the Eagles. I, I, I didn't see the uh, official raise their hands. But Eagles put it into the end zone following a big reception for Seth Simonek. Over West, Fairfax, Ralston. But they have some great football tradition here in Hominy. We'll get a chance to talk about that a little later. Second down and 10. Yeah, right here is uh, everybody split out. You better watch the quarterback draw. Spread the field. Across the middle, incomplete. That was Sutton coming across the middle. Good drop there by Luke Shepard. Number 34, Shepard, the linebacker. Third and 10 upcoming. So third down and 10. Now 20 seconds to play in the first half. We've seen Blaine Hip kick an extra point, but I didn't see a whole lot of range on him. I don't know if they get try him. For a field goal if they don't get it here or not. Empty the backfield. Three to the right side, two to the left. And Woods dumps it out in the left flat. And finding some running room is Sutton, but he is upended. That'll be a first down, which will stop the clock. But how many has timeouts left? Yeah, they've got two timeouts left. I don't... From the 23 down to the 12, he gains 11. That is Sutton's fourth catch of the night. Yeah, it wouldn't be great to run the ball here with two timeouts left. Why, why is the clock not running? And that is exactly he got what Tyler bounds, Looper. Did he get out of bounds? I Tyler Looper saying, I don't think he did. I don't think he did either. Now they'll put the clock in motion. Yeah. Hominy just got a bunch of extra time. But they've got to get a playoff right now. Call time and now out. they'll burn the timeout. Timeout. So down to five seconds. Wasted a little bit of time there. Yeah, they sure did. So five seconds to play in the first half. We'll just go ahead and keep this one right here. And Hominy leads 15 to 14. They've got the ball at the Tonkawa 12 on the left hash with a chance for basically one more play, maybe a quick one. They do have one timeout left. And he's going to have one timeout left, and I don't think it's going to do any good I don't think when you're is. in the dressing room. Yeah, you're exactly right. That's why I, did, I thought they might run the ball a little bit there at the end of the game because he got, had two timeouts left in this last minute. Stick around at halftime. We'll go back and recap the first half, go over the first half stats, and check the Scordal scoreboard. Boy, great atmosphere here tonight in Hominy. Big crowd on there, both sides. There is a big crowd. Only about a little over an hour from Tonkawa and a lot of people from Hominy. These two schools, they love their high school football. Yes, they do. It's been that way for a long time. First down and 10 from the 12. Most likely just one play left here at the end of the half. This is a big one. Five wide, Woods, flushed right, flushed right, and pushed out of bounds. 62. That'll be the end of the first half. Good play, but Dominique Green. So he's pushed out of bounds back at the, we'll say, the 28-yard line. He ends up losing. Might as well throw it up in the air. 16. <laughs> there. Yeah, you're yeah. exactly right. Flat to Nunez. Brought down inbounds, so that'll be a first down. Trojans, minute 35 to go in the half.
Boyce in tight formation. Two running backs now. Hand off to Cheatham coming around the near side. They string out the play. String out the play. Cheatham around the edge. Touchdown, OBA. Judd Cheatham into the end zone. Touchdown. That one was mostly on the ground. The one pass to Nunez for a first down. 117 to go in the half. That makes the score 46 to 0. There is a flag on the play, though, and that is going to be a hold on the Trojans, and it'll all come back. So take that six off the scoreboard. The score remains 40 to 0. 117 to go in the first half. So it'll be first and 12 for OBA. Boyson brings the play in from the sideline. Curious to see how this works for the Trojans. Nobody in the backfield for Boyson. That swing pass this time to Nunez. He has a blocker in Cheatham, forced out of bounds right at the 10-yard line. Hardly any time comes off the clock. Clock goes from 117 down to 113, so it's positive yardage for OBA. Not a whole lot, but that will bring up second and probably seven or six for the Trojans right at about the 10-yard line of Garber. Boyson in the backfield alone. Ian Easton in the slot. Here, Nunez wide to the near side. Judd Cheatham on the far side of the field. Boyson takes a snap. Looking for Nunez. Trying to find a block. Cuts it back inside. A flag comes out. He gets into the end zone, maybe. He's right at the goal line. I don't think it's going to matter, though. Holding called against OBA. So that one will come back. Five more seconds came off the clock on that play. 108 left here in the first half, 40 to nothing. Caleb Mendoza in for the Trojan offense. Ian Easton taking a quick break. As Boyston breaks the huddle, here come the Trojans. Mendoza in at the tight end on the far side of the formation. Boyce taking Mendoza by himself in the back of the end zone. Touchdown, OBA. Caleb Mendoza pulls it in. Touchdown, Trojans. Shoestring catch there from Caleb Mendoza. Great story there for the OBA Trojans. First season Mendoza's ever played football. Grew up uh, in a military family. Caleb's from Hawaii originally, and then uh, family was stationed in Alaska before being stationed here in Enid. Had never played football before, participated in basketball last year for the Trojans. Came out for football this year because his friends begged him to, and he decided to give it a try. Touchdown, Caleb Mendoza. So that makes the score Oklahoma Bible Academy 46. The Garber Wolverines 0. Trojans line up for two. Shotgun formation, Buddy Boydston, Judd Cheatham in the backfield. It's going to be an option play. Boyce is going to take it on in, stroll into the end zone. Two-point conversion is good, OBA. OBA 48, Garber 0. We'll, we'll take a quick break. Be right back here at obatrojans.tv. Dr. Matt Dieselhorst at Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics can help you get game day Ow. That's a big play, though, from Kevin. Like I said, or not a first play touchdown, but like I said earlier in the game, it's just big plays. A big play for Kevin earlier. A big play now for Kevin. A big play from Seth. I mean, it's big play city here in the town of Hennessy. And a first and ten. From the 47, I guess he got, I guess he stepped out back at the 47. Drops back. Pass down the seam to Weston. Oh, no! What a ball to Weston. I, I, it might have been tipped. Oh, what a perfect ball from Titan. Up the seam, a good route. Or I guess it isn't, you know, like a great route. You're just running straight. But a good play call. Uh, was able to break the seam, and I mean, it was a good ball. It might have been tipped. It was inevitably, inevitably on the ground. 
And it will be a pass. Seth downfield. Good defense. Again, trying to go for a big play. That time it doesn't work, surprisingly. And it'll be a third and ten from the 47. Honestly, um, Alva's done a pretty good job at, at preventing those plays. Like, I think, you know, this may, be, this may be an overreaction, but I think it finally, here in week eight, teams have learned to stop the Slant Cobra. Um, it only took at least four touchdowns on it and lobbed up to Langston Smith, but it falls incomplete, almost caught by the coach. So it'll be a fourth and ten. See what the Eagles do here, but you know it. It maybe, maybe teams have learned to co how to cover the slant cobra and how to cover that you know cover beater. And looks like the punt team is coming on. I don't think they're going to fake it this time, but um, I've been wrong many times before. And he will punt it. Ooh, good punt. That might be his best punt of the season if he gets a good bounce. Didn't get a great bounce, but it will be down inside the 15-yard line, down to the 14, and Alva will have to go, hmm, quick math, 86 yards in 47 seconds. We'll see if they're capable of that. They do have playmakers. It's just a matter of getting it out to the playmakers, whether it be, you know, a handoff and good block set up and he's able to just bust it out to the sidelines or uh, you know wide receiver that gets wide open you leave up a good ball and I mean you know he's probably gone um, but it's a matter of you know we'll see how they get it to these playmakers because they have they have 47 seconds to go 86 and it will be ooh that's a that's a cool play that's a cool play um it was like a screen pass to Weston Tucker, and then it was flipped to Drake Warden. He did not get out of bounds, so it's going to be 30 seconds. Um, I mean, Alva still has three timeouts left, so if they really wanted to try for this, they could. It's to be a second and four. Clock ticking. I don't know what's going on. Um. Oh, resetting the clock. Yeah, resetting the clock. Back to twenty-nine seconds. Second and four. He's gonna take it himself to the right sideline. Makes one miss. Makes one more miss, and is tackled. At the 35, brought down by Gunnar Carthel and Andres Gonzalez. They're driving pretty quick here. Alva is first. Oh, goodness. First and 10 from the 35. And Alva's going to take their first charge timeout. I mean, it's definitely possible for Alva to put it in the end zone here. I mean, definitely possible. Um, they have gotten wide open at least twice on routes by Weston Tucker. So maybe they run another one of those and, you know, luck into another, you know, wide open. Or, like, they just get lucky set up or block set up great. I guess I wouldn't be lucky, but they – Block set up great, and someone you know is able to make a play, get out to the sideline, or just you know have a wide open hole up the middle, which I don't think would happen. But I'm obviously not going to jinx anything. Um, Eagles might be playing prevent here, as that's five DBs on the field. That being Weston Smith, Jacob Johns, 
Seth Semenek, Carson Riddle, and Kevin Trillo. Yeah, they are in prevent. They don't want anything to go over their heads. As it's four, four people out wide for Alva. He's going to drop back. It's good pressure. He escapes the pressure. He's going to throw to Drake Wharton. And it falls incomplete. Second and 10, 17 seconds here to play. In prevent, it would be pretty hard for Alva to get something going. Because I do not think this quarterback has an arm that can throw like 60 or 70 yards. Um, I feel like you're not going to find a lot of quarterbacks like that in 2A Oklahoma football. Um, so Eagles and prevent is going to be hard to, you know, get it over them. And flag on the play. False start on the offense, it'll be a second and 15. Yeah, it'd be pretty difficult to score here. I'm not going to lie. Second and 15 from the 30. 17, or not 17, 17 seconds, 70 yards to go. Officials talking. Don't know what about. Maybe asking how his day was going. Second and 15. Drops back, passing the flats to Drake Wharton. To the left side, he has speed and gets out. Before the first down, it'll be a third and short. Ten seconds left. Here in the first half. Third and five following a ten-yard reception. And hey, actually, I mean, if you're Alba, I really wouldn't want to lob it up. Because if you get, I mean, if Weston or Seth or Kevin intercepted, uh, there's a good chance that play, ooh, oh, that, might, that was almost it. I was going to say it's a good chance that they could take that back. Um, that pass was thrown up the middle for, who is that? Is that Weston Tucker? No, that is not Weston Tucker. That is number eight, Drew Glass. Um, incomplete good defense by Seth and Carson we'll see what they go for here two ru two people rushing and they still get pressure that's I mean I don't know who else with, was with Brandon but them being able to get pressure very impressive it's a 2v5 there regardless we will go to half the Eagles lead 22 to 8 uh, there are three touchdowns, very eventful. A five-yard, one-yard. All right, we've got some good halftime score updates for you. For a final score update in the Class B matchup between the number one-ranked OBA Trojans and the Garber Wolverines, the final to that game is going to be 48-0 to zero with uh, Garber coming out on top. For our two score game of the week, so we have Jones and Chandler. The score at that is Jones up 20-0 to zero at halftime. For the other game of the week, the ranked number five Hominy Bucks versus the ranked number four Tonkawa Buccaneers. That score at halftime is 15 to 14. OBA beat Garber. I do apologize. Ethan, my producer, is saving me right there. So OBA will beat Garber 48 to zero. Sorry, that is the final for that game. Like I said, Jones and Chandler, that score is 20 to zero with Chandler losing to Jones. The other one, Hominy and Tonkawa. Hominy is up by one point, 15 to 14 against Tonkawa at half. In the Kingfisher-McLeod game, that score is 0-0 still at halftime. The Washington-Purcell game is 33-0 with Washington coming out on top at half. In the other halftime score of the Crossings Knights and the Bethel game, that score is 21-0 with Crossings being up on half. And the Hinton-Minko score is going to be Hinton 12-Minko 0 at half. We're going to jump live now back to that Hinton-Minko game if they, as they have just come out of halftime. Five-yard line, he's going to have a yard, so it'll be fourth down and one. And here's a big play at fourth down. Got him off sides. The old faithful wow, works. Wow, that's huge. That's huge. And there it is. What a huge play right there. The tempo kind of caused that as they were trying to get up in a hurry. And so first and ten on the 35-yard line. 
And things finally go in Minko's way. Well, that's what I say. If we can put this thing in the end zone, it puts a little pressure on Hinton. And uh, I think that's that's very, very important to do that. Hand it off to Mullen. He goes straight up, and he just churns the legs. And he's going to get a couple, and it'll be second down and eight. I think Coach Brady Wardlaw is really going to depend on the offensive line this half, looks like, to, to really generate those yards. And, uh, yeah, he's got, he's got uh, six linemen down on the line trying to move Hinton. Hinton is, getting, is winning the line of scrimmage, but we're starting to see some movement. Second down and eight. McMurtry's going to come out to the side, going to keep it. He's, He's going to get a couple blocks. He's going to make his way oh, cut. He's got what it. He's going down He's five. Going Touchdown, Touchdown, Bulldogs. Oh, my goodness. What Big block by Hunter Mullinax. Oh, did you see that move by McMurtry there about the 20? I did not mean to over talk you. <laughs> so Mullinax with a huge block on the corner. And Reed McMurtry makes one little wiggle, and as he makes that nice cut, he's able to go down the sideline and punch it in for the Bulldogs, and that's exactly what the doctor ordered. McMahon out for the extra point. Gets it up. It looks good. And it, oh, and he misses. Oh, man. Just to the left. Well, that's okay. So it'll stay 12-6. to uh. six. But that's what you wanted to come out of the second half. Only nine minutes and 59 seconds. Only took two minutes to score those six points. Yeah. And maybe a little momentum. Good job by Reed McMurtry. Yeah. We'll give him kudos on that. He struggled a little that first half, but came out and made it happen on, on two big runs. It was a big run on third down yes. and another big run there uh, to score the touchdown. It was a big run. And um, I, that, that was that move by Reed, he was – just really impressive. I thought he was going to get knocked out of bounds. And Hunter Molinax pancaked the guy yes, out there. Yes, he did. And it, just great blocking over here around the 40, 35 and 40 to get him on the edge. And he's got enough speed when he gets out there. Yeah. That, those absolutely. things can happen. Hey, so. Cameron, what would you think about that right there, the onside kick? What was, Were you surprised by that as much as I was? Hold on, I got you. Hold on. Now do it. All right. Yeah, I was very surprised by that. What a what a good way to start this second half out. It really lit a fire into this team. I think they're looking a little bit different now. Yeah, what a play call, man, to get the onside kick. What a what a great call by the coach. Great execution by the Bulldogs as Mullinex hit that onside co- uh, kick just forward, and man, Little John with his athleticism able to dive on it, and the Bulldogs finally get something going. And so we'll kick it again for the second time in this half. He's going to kick it on down to about the 20-yard line. They're going to try to go up the middle here. He's got a little bit of room, finally got it. That was uh, no Sebastian Valdez got him down about the 40-yard line, and so that's where the Comets will start. And one of the things I like seeing is uh, a little bit of emotion out there now, Pastor Mike. We're yeah. not, we were pretty flat in that first half and got a little fire in our bones right now. Yeah, for sure. And Let's see what the defense does here so, on this uh, drive. So first and 10 on the 39-yard line. Going to hike it, going to give it to the running back. He's trying to get to the outside. He makes, he finds a little bit of room out there. Little John was trying to get him, couldn't quite get him. And I think that was Ashton Taylor that finally got it. And when you look at Gage Law, number yeah, Gage Law's in, number there. 27. How about that? It's good to see him. He's got that big old club on his yeah, hand. he does. I wasn't sure if he was going to get to play or not. And so he's giving Hunter Mullinax a little breather, which uh, which is big if he's going to run the ball too. So it's good to see these guys getting in. So second down and six, maybe seven. Looking to throw it. He does. There's McMahon. Way to Can't tackle it. him. Ah, missed another tackle. Caruth yeah. and McMahon missed the tackles, didn't wrap him up. And he's going to get about – 15 yards on that one. It'll be first and 10 at the 44-yard line of yeah, the Bulldogs. We need the defense to stiffen up here, Pastor Mike, and, and get a stop. It's really critical uh, yeah. to not let them. Once again, the quarterback doesn't have the ball, but for maybe two seconds tops. I mean, he gets it out of there quick. And so those defensive backs have got to be ready. And you got to wrap up when you get get your chance to get the tackle first and 10. We're going to jump on over now to the 2A matchup, which is also the Scordal Game of the Week, or a Class A matchup, Scordal Game of the Week, District A5. The number four ranked 
Tonkawa Buccaneers, coached by Mike Kirtley with a record this year of 7-0, and taking on the Hominy Bucks, ranked 5 in Class 5A, coached by Caleb Christian, also 7-0 and going into this game. Long for him to get going. He's over 100 yards rushing, 11 carries, 104 yards, second and five. Call his own number again. What a nice move yep. to get out across the 45 yards. It goes, it bodes well for your team. He's going to look to pass. Got him on the outside. He's open, but okay. overthrows it. Had him open at the 30-yard line, but threw it too far to the sideline, and so that'll make it third down and 14. This is a big play because I think if they don't get it here, they're going to punt the football. Once again, throwing it to number 10. That's who they're looking for. McMurtry really didn't stay with him on that one, but no. uh, a little too far out. And you can see if the quarterback's going to hold on the ball more than a second or two, he's going to be moving outside of the pocket. And so no. it's been hard to get a pass rush on him. And so this is definitely a passing down, though, so maybe here's where Ashton Taylor and Gage Law – there on the defensive ends can go find that quarterback. So third down and 14. He's going to step back to pass, throws it up. McMahon is there. Oh, good. Intercepted. And he intercepted it. Intercepted by Mako. Landed McMahon. Wow, what a play by the freshman. Johnny on the spot. He was in position once, and he missed it. He got in position that time, and he made the play. Oh, wow. Nicely done by Landon McMahon as he comes down with the big turnover. And it'll be first and 10 on the 21 yard line of the Bulldog. Put him at the 50, gaining Gain five. five. Third and five upcoming. So here's a big play right here. Third down and five. Hominy would love to get this Tonkawa offense off the field and get the football back to start the third quarter. Brister yeah. bounces it outside, finds running room, and he'll get near the stick. He should be a little bit short. Ends on the mark. Yeah, yeah a little it's gonna, short. It's going to be a yard short. He needed right, to get across the 45. They're going to mark him just outside. They're going to mark him clear back at the 46. Yeah. So he picks up four, and he needed five. Marshall and Keene on the stop. Four, four now you get fourth and short. You go for it definitely right here. Big play. Want to, don't want to give that ball back to Hominy at this point. Three minutes into the third quarter, 15 to 14, Hominy, but Tonkawa fourth down and one. Bristow. He won't get it. He was tackled from behind. Great play by Xavier Purdue. Marshall Others say it's Marshall. I thought it was Purdue, but it's one of those two were back there. They got him behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah, they ran the option and wait too many times. That time they shot everybody and had too many people on that side of the ball. So a loss of one, and Hominy will take over and grab some momentum. And they crank the music. It gets loud here right now. They'll take over at their own 47-yard line. This drive will start with 8.47 to play. In the third quarter, how many with the ball in a 15-14 lead? Woods into Tonkawa territory. We'll pick up about six or so. Let's see where they mark it. They're going to mark it at the, at the 47. Shepard. Luke Shepard, number 34, 6'2", junior linebacker. He's been a lot of tackles. Yeah, leading tackler on this Tonkawa team. Gain of, gain of six brings up second down and a long four. Woods will hand it off this time and right up the middle into the clear and toward the end zone. Goes T.K. Sutton down inside the 10-yard line. Great burst from T.K. He got a little speed. Got a flag down, though, on the 40-yard line. This one coming back. They're walking it is. It's a hold. <laughs> it's a hold. So he'll pick up a, about three yards in the carry, but they'll oh, mark it back oh, 10 from there. He's got a good burst. He really does. So they'll put the ball back across, well, right at midfield, the 50-yard line. Doesn't take him long to get at top speed. 
So back at the 50, it is second down and eight. The purple clad, how many bucks? And the orange and black of the Tonkawa Buccaneers. Two really good football programs. Mm. Been that way for a long time. Woods to throw. Back across the middle, ball caught and popped immediately. And uh, they're going to say that uh, might have targeted. Ball was caught at the 37-yard line. Did he go high on the two linemen and a linebacker and just rolled them forward, and he got about got about seven yards. It's going to be second down and three. Wow. <laughs> Jake Carruth does not fall backwards. No, he does not. I don't and, care if there's uh, four of them on him. And that's with a hurt shoulder. They're uh, they're having a hard time containing Mullinax in uh, number 25 out here, Jake Carruth tonight at this, this half. Tried to get him off sides with the old faithful. Didn't work. 11 seconds on the play clock. He's going to look to get to the outside, see if he can get a block. Mm. Had to make one man miss, couldn't make him miss. That was the defensive end, I believe. Or maybe the linebacker. That was that linebacker that was able to get him. They've been able to get a hat on him, and that's how they've been able to yeah. spring it, but couldn't dare. So lost a couple yards. It'll be third down and five. Yeah, that was the uh, middle linebacker. Yeah. He was the one that was able to get over there. That was a nice play by him. You have two plays to get Handed off to yards. Carruth. He's touched in the backfield, and, and he still falls forward. He's going to get about to the 16-yard line, it looks like, and so it'll make it fourth down and three. Yeah. So see what they come up with here. See if they've got an, something else in their pocket. Yeah. As we roll down to five minutes and ten seconds, he went out of bounds. So clock stops. Molinax back in. Six lineman, Carter Pate, right there behind the line. Kind of playing that H-back fullback spot. He's going to look to pass. Then he runs it. He cuts oh, up the middle. Man. He's dives short. forward, and he doesn't get it. No. Probably wrong decision going up the if middle. He went up to the outside. He probably would have got that. So. And so a good drive by the Bulldogs is stopped as the turnover on downs. Well, defense the gonna Comets have, will get the ball back. Good. Going to jump back now to the Scordal game of the week, the 2A Chandler Lions versus the 2A Jones Longhorns. That score coming out of halftime was Jones up 20 to Chandler's zero. Gain to three, third down and 13 to the 46-yard line. They need to get to the Jones 41. Defensive substitution out there. Check it in for the Longhorns is Braden Scott. Jones trying to win their fifth game in a row after an 0-3 start and a streak that began in their district opener against Dar Spencer, 69 to six. Nation motions to the far side. They fake the inside handoff, and now a throw down the middle of the field, and Jackson guns it past Ty Garver incomplete. And it really hasn't mattered into the win or uh, going with the wind. That ball, the deep ball, has just been overthrown all night by Jackson. And it hadn't even been close. I mean, you're talking five, ten yards over the head of the receiver. We're going to jump back now to the matchup between the Hinton Comets and the Minko Bulldogs. Quarterback. Okay. And there's Jake Carruth. I see Valdez out there as well. So Carruth with a tackle. He's going to get about two and a half. So I'll call this third and seven. Carruth is going to come out. Pate's going to come in. Valdez is going to go into the middle. So... You know that shoulder is sore, and so Carruth yeah. is going to have a seat over here. Interesting they put Gage Law in as the uh, one of the tackle spots. So third and eight, they scooted it back. He's going to look to throw the ball. Going to the oh, outside, it's yeah, picked. Touchdown. Reed McMurtry picks it. Reed McMurtry. And he dives in, touchdown, Bulldogs. Reed McMurtry with the pick six. Beautiful by Reed McMurtry. And uh, what a... What a half, Pastor Mike. What a half. So Reed McMurtry reads it. Reed reads it and knows they're going to try to go for that, that corner route. 
And he pops out there and just catches it. And on the run, he only had now, one man to beat, and he beats him. This extra point gets very the important. touchdown. Lanik McMahon ready to kick. Clayton very, Hughes for the hold. Very important extra point. Good snap, good hold, oh, bad kick. Man. No. 12 to 12. And so, yep. man, he kicked the top of the ball. I think he kind of put his hand up or head up. He didn't look down all the way. No. It's like a golf swing. If you don't keep your head down, you're probably going to top it. I think you're <laughs> right. So. But it is 12 to we're going to jump now over to the District 3A1 matchup between the Kingfisher Yellow Jackets and Coach Jeff Myers versus the McLeod Redskins and Coach Coleman Ramsey. Up by McLeod because they evaded, basically left the bottom side wide open. We'll take one with them, 6.09 to go. Third quarter, third and short, and we come back. Ah, sure catch, but I don't think he was, he didn't get to the sticks. You got to, if you're the receiver, you got to get to that first down marker to give yourself a chance. Hey, I'm going to tell him to stop the clock up there. He gets pushed out of bounds at the 36-yard line. Stop the clock. And the Dragons will take over on downs. Four minutes and 20 seconds left in this quick-moving third quarter. Each team with one possession. As Brody Gallion trots off to, onto the field. Spread formation. Gallion takes a snap. Hands it off to Knowles. Nothing there. Nothing there for the running back from Purcell. That's the deal. Offensive line. Purcell, they got to get off the ball because that whole, that pocket is collapsing quick. Got Kilmer in there, outside linebacker now. Gallion sends Knowles in motion, throws it out to Knowles. Good blocking on the edge. Looks like there's a penalty on the play. Yeah, going to have a hold on... Uh, Still defender, whoever was covering Mason Thomas out there. A little yeah, we'll see it right here. Delay getting off a block. For cell vision source, instant replay. Yeah. Another receiver number. Seth, they start the motion. They'll fake the handoff. Creasy drops. He's going to throw it deep over the middle. He's looking for Braden Scott. And he's caught him in stride. And he's in for the touchdown. What Braden a Scott. Hauls in a 59-yard touchdown strike from Clayton Creasy. What a great pass. That ball was right on the fingertips, the extension to catch the ball, and he ran right by the entire Chandler defense. It's another big play for the Longhorns. Second touchdown toss of the night for Creasy, his 16th of the year. Braden Scott with his team-high ninth for a score, and it is 26 to nothing Longhorns at the midway point here in the third quarter. Joel Hernandez, who came in 20 of 24 on extra points, 2 of 3 tonight. The snap is high. Hernandez approaches, and it is good. They roughed Hernandez at the end of the play, and you can see the flag coming in. A great job that time by the holder to get that high snap down and give Hernandez a chance at the extra point. Timeout, 6-11 to play, third quarter. Jones. He's first and nine. Eight and a half. Two wide outs. Evans in the backfield. Quick pass to Burnham. Really quick, and, and Burnham just didn't have time to get around and get his hands on it. So it's going to be second and nine. I wonder if Russell's wishing he'd ride him a pullover. I got a medium. <laughs> Second nine. <laughs> Richard. <laughs> oh. Looking like a little miscommunication in the backfield. Sternberger rolled, looked to throw, didn't have anything, kept it. Gets across midfield, but it's going to be a Third down and five. 
I'd get a good look at a steak. <laughs> but I just asked the butcher's opinion. <laughs> Stevenson Insurance Center third down. <clears throat> Jack is just trying to get something going here. Four and a half to go third quarter. No score, either team. Pass. Quick pass. Looks like it may have been received. It is caught, yeah. but it looks just shy of the first down marker, so it's going to be fourth and one. It will Banks. Unless it's a good spot. That, that looks like a pretty good spot. Yep. <laughs> like I'm, and this isn't me picking on him, but have we had a measurement all year before tonight? No. I don't think we have. No. I don't recall one. And we're about to have our third one. Uh, that guy said, hey, you made me run all the way over here <laughs> just to tell you that it's a first down. Happened right there. So first and 10 on the 21-yard line. Mullinex behind McMurtry. Going to hand it to Mullinex. He makes and a cut up the middle. Runs over oh, one. Man. He's finally tackled by the linebacker, but, man, good run first. on the first run. He's going to get about six yards, and he's going to almost six yards. I really, yeah, second down, and, second down and four. I really like this football we're playing. Saying offensive line, you block. We're going to yeah. go right up the middle. You yeah. block it. Six linemen and then a, a fullback, basically, with Pate. Going to hand it off again up the middle. He's going to find a little bit of room. He's going to try to roll forward. And that'll be third down and short yep. with a minute 12 left right now. You know what? You'll take a third and short in this type of situation. This is exactly what you want to see, eating the clock and driving towards the end zone. That's right. With the defense playing so well, this really the whole game they played well. And so getting the call in, down to 55 seconds. This could be the last play of this quarter. Snapped it. He's going to try to find his way to the outside. There's a flag, probably a hold. He gets enough for a first down. Got down to about the five-yard line, but I believe there's going to be a holding call. And that's what you can't have in those situations. Yeah, McMurtry is down. Yeah. And he is hurting. He's not feeling too good. And that's not good for the Bulldogs. Not McMurtry at all. McMurtry does a lot. Yeah. We're going to jump on over now to the 2A3 matchup between the Purcell Dragons and the number one ranked Washington Warriors. The Warriors are coached by Brad Beller and have an undefeated record of 7 and 0, while the Dragons are coached by Tracy Scott with a record of 3 and 4. Bring up second down. I like it though. Big run, big first down. Big for, big uh first down pickup right there on the on the big run play. Got first down again right there and just stick with that little short pop pass. Guys, we're under 50 seconds. <laughs> this game is just blowing. Yeah, we're looking at being done. Knock on wood before 9 o'clock. That's, that's amazing. And my prediction of the ones playing the whole quarter is coming through. Time Arthur takes the snap and runs to the left. Line doing a Maybe good job. This, well, lineman, lineman doing a good job this quarter of breaking up some holes for these running backs to run through. And the Warriors are going to take this one into the fourth quarter. Warriors lead 33 to nothing here at Reed Field. You're watching Warrior football on WashingtonWarriors.tv. Lowers his shoulder. Maybe gets a yard, second down and nine. But a massive third down conversion by Jack Sternberger keeps the drive alive. A 34 yard run. Well, his receivers were 25 yards down the field, and he was asking them to come back. And by the time he got to the edge, he was like, Heck, just go. All right, now we got Cooper and Barton. Diamond formation. Barton gets it. Kind of caught from behind. It's close to the 10. Let's see where they spot it. Maybe the 12. 
Another Stevenson Insurance Center third down. I believe that's Hill at 17, correct? Yes. Same formation. Double tight. Wanted to get out in the flats. It wasn't there. Sternberger throws. Caught it by Evans. Touchdown. There it is. Dennis's Express Pharmacy touchdown. Harrison. We're going to go jump now to the Scordle game of the week. The Jones Longhorns versus the Chandler Lions. This is a matchup for the District 2A2. The Lions are 5-2 and two this year, while the Longhorns are 4-3. and three. And Chandler is on the board with a three-yard rushing touchdown from Kasman Hill. That is his... 14th rushing touchdown of the year. It's an impressive total, I believe. What is that career? 67 or 68? 69. 69 for Kasman Hill. That's a, that's a heck of a career. Landon Miller, who is 12 of 12 at extra points, is on for the point after try. This would pull Chandler to within 20, make it a three-score game. All this at the south end. It we're going to jump over now to the 2A3 matchup between the Purcell Dragons, coached by Tracy Scott with a record this year of 3-4, and four, losing to Community Christian last week, versus the Washington Warriors, who are ranked 1 in 2A, coached by Brad Beller with a record this year of 7-0, and 0, beating Lindsay last week 42-6. We still have 18 minutes to play 12. <laughs> My money's on the 12. The under. <laughs> I know the guy's running the clocks up there. <laughs> First down and 20 for the Warriors. Alexander goes in motion. Cantrell looking to throw to Alexander. Throwing it on the out route. What a throw. Cooper Alexander runs up the middle. That was going in. Touchdown up the sideline for 29 yards. Cooper Alexander. Going to go now to our Class A matchup in District 5. The Scordle game of the week, the Tonkwa Buccaneers ranked four in Class A versus the Hominy Bucks, who are ranked five in Class A. Right on the mark. But somebody said or did something. I think it's going to be a late hit. On the play. So Ryan Let's Morgan see. comes in and throws a completed pass. Coaches, Coach Hominy is not very happy, so I'm assuming it's going to be on Hominy. Personal foul call against the Bucks. Boy, you don't want that if you're Hominy. Nope. You do not want to give Tonkawa free yards. 15 yards. Across midfield, down to the 42. And here they come. You better get ready. Tonkawa wants to get the Bucks back on their heels here. Morgan still at quarterback. Cam Jackson bounces left, makes a move, steps out of a tackle, stays on his feet. It's down inside the 30-yard line. He'll pick up a first down. They'll mark him right at the 30, a gain of 12. Great determination that time. Did not want to go down after one or two hits. 12 carries, 57 yards rushing. Right ahead, not much doing. A couple of yards. Now he breaks out. Down the sideline he goes. He may go. 20, 15 to the 10 to the 5. Touchdown. Are you kidding me? He was stacked up, and somehow he squirted out, ran right, and goes in for the touchdown. Let's see here what we got. The officials are going to talk this over, and the Chandler people not happy. I think they wanted that play to be blown dead. Uh, instead, that the play was allowed to go on. That was a heck of a run. I mean, that's some serious jets to get outside and then outrun the entire defense, but I think it's coming back. Yep, it is. The white cap already directing traffic backwards. And that will take off a remarkable touchdown run by Chase Pitts. So a moment ago, the east side of the stadium was unhappy. Now they're happy. And the west side, who was ju in uh, jubilation now, is upset with the officials. I'm not going to race Chase Pitts in the parking lot tonight. I know that. Uh, he showed some extreme speed. Line of scrimmage will be back at the 45-yard line with 53 seconds to play here in the third quarter. And now Kevin Witt has come out of the field here on the near side. is Fisty with a white cap. 
May have been an inadvertent whistle. That's what I think it was. And now our referee will go over and say something to Jack Gray, who's in his fifth season. Jack, 33 and 20. We're going to jump now to the game between the Hinton Comets and the Minko Bulldogs. Get a first down on the one-yard line. They can. The advantage we have, if we don't get it, so we have them pinned within the five. So fourth, that's fourth down and three. It's on the four-yard line, I think. That's what it, it might like be on me. the five. Yeah, I'm going to say it's on the five. Fourth down and four. Tried to get him off sides. Didn't work. Let's see if they try to throw a pass here. I don't know. High snap. Got it to Cruz. Got, he's going to he get might, in there, man. Oh, he's hit hard. Wait, he rolls off. He got in. Touchdown, Bulldogs. Wow, what a run by Jake Carruth. Wow, Jake Carruth. He was hammered, and he rolled right off of it and rolled right into the end zone. Unbelievable run by Jake Carruth. He could not be stopped. And he puts another six on the board for the Bulldogs. Holy <coughs> moly, did he make a great play right there. Gosh, Jake Carruth punches it in for six, and they're going to go for two. I didn't think there was any way possible. I thought at least maybe he might have no. the first down. But he got hit hard. And he somehow, once again, falls forward, doesn't he? He never falls backwards. No, I mean, that was a that, that was all on Jake Carruth. Wow. All on Jake Carruth. What a play. What a play by Jake Carruth. And so McMurtry in, Mullinax behind him. He's going to give it to Mullinax. He and goes up the middle. He's trying to, I think he got stopped. Boy, he was close. Yeah. And that's going to be yeah, no uh, good, man. I sure would have liked that extra yeah, point there. Too. So didn't try to kick it because they missed both of them, and so went for two and missed that. Uh, but, man, what a job by Jake Carruth. Did you see that rumbling, stumbling, bumbling there by Jake Carruth? Yeah. Uh, man, did he punch that in. What do you think there? We're going to go now to our Squirtle game of the week. The Tonkawa Buccaneers ranked four in Class A versus the Hominy Bucks, who are ranked five in Class A. Both, game, or both teams go into this district game undefeated. Keeps that clock rolling now as we'll tick down to a minute to play in the third quarter. Second down and six. This is a big drive for Hominy right here. Woods. Jackson Needed about seven. I think he got about six. Flag on the play up at the 30-yard line is where it's lying. Talk about number 30-53, Guzman for Tonkawal. Assist by number 62, Grind. So this will knock the holding penalty. Will knock it back to the 20-yard line and get how many off schedule? So it will be second down and 19. Put the clock back in motion with 45 seconds to play in the quarter. Woods, near side, wants to throw back across the middle of the field. It's up for grabs. And they call pass interference. I thought it was a pretty good, pretty good coverage by Roman Chandler. I thought it was great coverage that time. I don't know. He, all he did is play the ball. They're discussing it right now. It looked like pretty darn good coverage right down below us. I don't know what you could do any different. Made a nice deflection on the pass. Across the line of scrimmage. Yep. Well, we had a flag down there on the 20. Ah, so that was Woods getting across the uh, the 20 yard line. He threw the football. He We're going to jump now to the 2A2 matchup between the Bethel Wildcats, coached by Joey Jinn. 
for the record this year of 4-3, and three, beating Shattuck last week, 64-32. to 32. Crossings Christian Knights are coached by Jonathan Keithley with a record this year of 5-2, and two, beating Chandler last week, 16-6. quarter 523 left stay tuned for fourth quarter action here in district play again this is crossingschool.tv down in 24 Sutton is blown up in the backfield 51. and Tonkawa is going to get the ball back yep, yep. Thompson first one in there to disrupt that play Well, no gain on the play. It's fourth down and a bunch. And Hominy will let the clock run out to the end of the third quarter. So we'll take a break. Hominy with a 27-14 lead. We're going to jump over to the 2A1 matchup between the Alva Goldbugs and Coach Dave Foster versus the Hennessy Eagles and head coach Paul Hicks. I believe you can make contact within the five. Oh, it's gonna be holding. So yeah, not DPI, but it will be, you know, pretty good yardage for the Eagles. Uh, it's gonna get them a first and ten, I think. Yeah, first and ten from the forty. So the Eagles get a free ten yards. And this one is going to go to Seabass, the right side. He has a block by Weston and Seabass inside the 20. Seabass finally getting going in the run game. Finally. The blocks are setting up for him, and he's, you know, it, it, <laughs> it's taken until Alva. Because, I mean, maybe, maybe he was good against Chisholm. Um, but he didn't get much for... Blackwell last week, and it's not like it's, I'm not going to sit here and blame Seabass, like the blocking just does not set up on a lot of the plays, and he just gets hit in the backfield, I, I don't know, uh, Titan's going to take this one on the fake sweep, I don't know if that's a sweep, he gets to the 11 yard line, it's going to be a second and two. Gunner in for Kevin. And it's going to be a handoff to Seabass. That's going to be a first down. Inside the 10 yard line, Eagles, it's going to be a first and goal. Of the roof sign here is from the official. <laughs> um, first and goal from the seven. And Titan is going to take it. He falls forward to about the two yard line. And take it to the same side, and he is not quite in. Looks like they're signaling for same play. Third and goal, he takes it to the right. And he got it. Touchdown. A 
We're going to hop back over to the other Scordal game of the week, the Class A Tonkawa Buccaneers, who are ranked four in Class A, versus the ranked five Hominy Bucks. Both teams go into this district game undefeated with a record of 7-0. and On and six. Big shout out to Coach Zachary in Granite, Oklahoma, if he's watching. Uh, got a future grandson or probably going to be a Buccaneer. I'm sure he's tuned in with this big game. And we've also got to give a shout out to Big Ben Welch, who used to be the voice of the Tonkawa Buccaneers. He passed away a few months ago. He was a huge Buccaneers fan, and we're doing this broadcast for him tonight. His, his brother is broadcasting this game downstairs for Tonkawa. There's a gain on four. Cooper squirts through. Trying to get to the edge. Gets to the five. Touchdown. Touchdown, Jackets. K. Cooper, nine yards. Dennis's Express Farmers. Down to the 15-yard line. As we will tick down to 10 minutes to play in this ball game. Still plenty of time. Oh, you betcha. Tonka Walk, they've got a great defense. They could stop how many and get the ball back, but they've got to score here first. Blake, Br Blake Bristow. Cameron Jackson on the carry. Oh, late. There was a, a, a late hit way after the play. And I think this is going against Hominy. A five yard run by Bristow. You think the team was behind, but <laughs> lose their cue. Yeah. But it's it's the team that's ahead. You're exactly <laughs> right. It'll be half the distance and an automatic first down. So it'll be first and goal at the six. First and goal on the five yard line. First and goal from the six. And they're going to say the five. I'll say the five, too. Pitch right side, Chandler. Strung it out. Nothing doing, tackled by, I'll tell you what, Xavier that was Xavier Purdue, Purdue making the play. Yep. Big defensive play for the Bucks right there. Yeah, he did a good job over on the end. He didn't let anybody, anything get outside. He just strung it out to the sideline. Loss of two on the play Lost brings up second six, down and goal, goal back at the seven. On the nine yard line. Morgan up under center. Will pitch it to Jackson, and Jackson gets back to the five. Cameron Jackson. So he'll pick up a couple of. Jackson. Third down and goal from the five. Two down territory for the Buccaneers. Whatever you do, you got to get the ball in number one or number five's hands. Let them make something happen. Ring League now leads Winnie Wood 27 to 18 in the third quarter. So from the five yard line. Pass across the middle is deflected away, incomplete. That's Jackson Woods making a nice play. Tried to slip the tight end across the middle after the fake handoff. Knocked down the ball. Fourth and goal from the five. So now it is fourth down and goal from the five yard line. And if Hamazi wins this ball game, it has been their defense that has got it done here in the second half. And Tonkawa is going to burn a timeout. Big play for them, fourth and goal from the five. 820. We got a hold there. That's just throws it out of the end zone. And that's going to be a turn into about a 13 yard penalty. That hold was about three yards, maybe four yards behind the line of scrimmage. I think you're mm -hmm. right. I think it's closer mm -hmm. to four yards mm -hmm. back there. That's, that's going to bring it back. Five. Ball's at the 20. That flag was at the 25, I think. So, yep. Yeah. That's a 15-yard loss. Stops clock with 
Carl gets the play call in. Two down linemen. Quick out pass. Nice spin Line. move. <laughs> Almost lost his feet. <laughs> Barton and Borelli out here defending. Got five yards, second and 20. Kind of glad he lost his footing because uh, he was wide open field from that catch. Now we got four wide outs to the top, to the bottom. Carl kind of bounced around there and just throws it downfield, throws it away. It's going to be third and 20. Kind of looked like a pass all the way. One of the linemen almost fell over backwards. He was trying to get into his pass blocking set. Quarterback does have a pretty good arm, though. Lost He's this one in the air. Again, beautiful Touchdown. catch. They say it's incomplete or complete. Touchdown, McLeod. Jackets are trying to say that he never had possession and because he definitely fumbled as he went out of bounds, but the officials say that's a 30-yard. We're going to jump back over to the district. Five of the Class A matchup between the Tonkawa Buccaneers, who we've said are ranked four in Class A, versus the Hominy Bucks, who are ranked five in Class A. Both teams go into this district game with a record of 7-0 and on the season. Bristow to throw, turns the corner, dies for the end zone. Got Touchdown! It. Good play. Blake Bristow. Had the option of order to throw it or run it and just got inside the pylon. Yes, he did. For Bristow, his second rushing touchdown tonight is 17th on the season, 27 to 20 with a big extra point upcoming. Cam Jackson will try the attempt here. Big play. Uh, they Cameron made it happen Jackson. on fourth and goal from the five. It is a six-point game. 8.21 to play. We'll take a break and be right back. You're watching it on Squirtle. With 8.21 remaining in the fourth. need to keep this clock running. That's what it's all about. <laughs> Look, I, is that Jacob Unruh down there next to you, Stuart? Oh, that would be a negatory. Oh, okay. Oh, it looks like an Unruh. Another handoff up the middle for Wilk. Three yard game, make it second down and seven. 29. 29 for who, the Warriors? That's Lucas Witcher. Warriors taking their time, getting the play in. Whatever handoff up the middle is, run that one, right? We're not going to miss <laughs> 9 o'clock by much. <laughs> not by a lot. Brakefield takes the handoff. Witcher, nice run. Makes a guy miss and finally brought down around the 35-yard line. Let's take a no look at the Purcell Vision Source in We're going to jump over now to the Class A District 3 matchup between the Hinton Comets and Coach Grant Potter versus the Minko Bulldogs and head coach Brock Wardlaw. The Bulldogs have a record of 5-1 this season, losing to CHA last week. And the Comets have a record of 4-3, losing to Crescent last week. Going to look to throw. He throws it out there. They're all over it. Oh, oh and he catches it somehow. Wow. Wow. McMahon and Nest wow, that was both a... knocked it up in the air, and somehow number 10 catches the yeah. or number 40 catches it. An unbelievable play. Yeah, that what you got. Uh, so lucky. Uh, yeah, wow. Sometimes it pays to be lucky, and they get it, it all does. the way down to the 22-yard line. Massive play there. They were, they were not faked out by it. They had triple coverage, really, right there. 
No, uh, just luck. It's somehow he just, the bounce just went to him. That's one of those you wish you just knocked it down. Yeah. So here we go. Another quick pass. Good McMahon job. Good job by Lane. Got him down. <coughs> just a gain of two. It's going to be on the 20-yard line, so it'll be second down and eight. And so what looms large here is if you let them in the end zone and they get an extra, extra point, point, all of a sudden they're ahead. Yeah, with no time. So we we got to. We got to stop this mess. I tell you that for sure. So that was a huge play by the Comets huge. to get that. And so second down and eight as we're down to a minute 50. A minute 50. I think the Comets are trying to run this thing out and try to score at the end. There's some motion. He's going to fake it. He's going to try to throw it. There's McMahon. Oh, oh and he catches off. it. He, he pushed off. Are, are they – and that's a touchdown for the Comets. And they went right down the wow. field there. Okay. Two big pass plays. And they tie it up. So here comes a massive extra point with one minute and 36 seconds left. Massive extra point uh. right here. And they're going to kick it. They missed the first one because he dropped it. So they're going to try to kick this extra point. Makes that last extra point just huge. Yeah, it does. Here's the snap. Good snap. Good hold. Ball's up and a good kick. And they go ahead by one. Wow. We're going to jump over now to the Class 2A District 1 matchup between the Alva Goldbugs and Coach Dave Foster versus the Hennessy Eagles and head coach Paul Hicks. The Eagles have a record of 6-2, and two, beating Blackwell last week, 61-7. to seven. The Gold Bugs have a record this year of 3-4, and four, beating Chisholm last week, 44-12. to 12. Gained about 10 yards on the carry. Getting out to the edge. He does, it's like, they run that formation a lot, but when they don't run that formation and they just hand it off to Wharton, or like every time they hand it off to Wharton in that formation, he gets more yards than the rest of them combined. Um, uh, I say that, and Lance Mathers gets to the edge, and Lance Mathers breaks off one. And he breaks off another Lance Mathers. Oh, my goodness. Wow. A 44-yard rushing touchdown for Lance Mathers. He broke off one, and then he broke off a second, and then he broke off a third. Lance Mathers, what a carry. I guess I just completely jinxed that. Um, that entire game, that formation is just massive. Makes you, it makes it a possibility. A loss here makes it almost an impossibility, unless something just right happens in the last two weeks. So McMurtry deep and Nest deep. They've been kicking it to Nest, and they do it again. He's going to let it bounce. Yeah, oh, no. Oh, no. And he picks it up at the five-yard line. And he's going to have to outrun one. He does. He gets oh. a block. Oh, and he should have just kept running. Yeah, he should have just kept running. And he's going to be down at the 23-yard line or 22-yard line. So they got to go 78 70. yards here to get some points on the board. So on the 22-yard line, a minute and 29 seconds left. Yeah. Um, we so Johnson in the backfield, Brummel, Hughes, Little John on the far side, Mullinax on the near side. There's the snap. Going to come over to the left. Going to throw it over to Mullinax. Too far out of bounds. So third or second down and ten. Minute twenty-five left. So the defense couldn't hold up on the last play there of the the last drive that Hinton had. They played so well yeah, all game. Just, it was and so here's Binko trying to make something happen. There's the snap. Fake the handoff. He's going to throw it up. He's got Hughes. Oh, and it's intercepted. And he's tackled at the 35-yard line, and that'll be it. Well, uh, and that'll be a that'll be it right there. Hughes was open, but able to intercept it, and Hinton makes the plays at the end of the game. I think to that, win the game. I think that 
what we see was a double pass. Yeah, they're working something here. There's a man a wide pass. open, and the catch is made. Sternberger's going to have to try to chase him down, slows him down. Here comes the rest of the cavalry. The Redskins have it inside the Jacket 10. He's down at the sixth yard line, making a first down and goal. I don't notice where that man lined up at, but he had to be on the end of the line of scrimmage. Well, they forgot about him. Now it's first and goal. Campbell, not much, second down. Approaching four minutes. Almost no offensive yeah. fireworks for three quarters, and then suddenly we're going to start boxing. Everybody's <laughs> motion across. Campbell again. Campbell cuts inside, inside cut. finds the end zone. <laughs> I believe he did. Touchdown. Redskins. Six yard touchdown run. Redskins appear to be going for two. It comes with 344 to play, so just moments ago, the Jackets led 14 to nothing and had all the momentum. Skins have timeout. Swiped it back. They're going to put this on the near hash. Oh, I thought he called timeout. Here we go. Big two point conversion. Redskins trying to tie it up. He rolls, rolls to right. His right. There's Throws a, to his left. A man wide open. Catch is made. And we are tied up. Caden Q. Caden Q. Caden Q. Caden Q. Caden Q. Drug him all the way across the field. Three forty-four to go. And we are tied at fourteen. Jacket scored, 55 seconds left in the third. To go up seven to nothing in this game, then with 8.55 to play, a three play 71 yard drive to go up 14-0. But the Redskins pieced together big play after big play ever since. And they've tied it up at 14. So what was once a seemingly comfortable two score margin is now a tie ball game. The Jacket offense is going to have to find a way again to put some points on the board. Short, Short kick. kick. Waswell calls for the fair catch, makes it at the 30. Fair pitch made at the 30. Out now with little, all the momentum, little extra pep in the step. Yep, yeah, they're walking around, slapping hands. They're ready to go. Here comes the jacket offense, it's going to be Barton in the backfield with Sternberger. Cobalt in motion, takes Cobalt, lead blocker Evans, he's got a gap. There's Sternberger, tries to kick in the Jets, does he have them? Inside the 20, inside the 10, touchdown Jackets! One Just play. like that, 70 yards, Dennis's Express Pharmacy touchdown. The Jackets have gone to that play time and again, and it pays off big time as they answer the Redskins.
like you said, they're using Cobalt as a decoy to suck the linebackers across, and you're pulling Evans with him and lead blocking, and he had a heck of a gap right there. There's been too many times where Evans has tried to clear the way that he hasn't knocked at least one red skin on his rear. And again, Sternberger wasn't touched on that play. Kingfisher family dental extra point. It is up. And it is good. Just like that. 21-14 jackets. We're going to take a timeout. Come back with more fourth quarter action after this. Trail Creek. We're going to jump live now over to the Bethel Crossings matchup. Silas Ward's going to absolutely that, – that's a tough loss there on the, on the running back room and on the defensive line. But, but the talent is here and, and the development has been here, and, and it's been exciting to watch uh, Coach Keithley and the coaching staff um, get the most out of this talent. Yeah, that's, I, I echo that. I'd, I'd say that some of, the, uh, some of the younger guys, we're getting some guys that have some um, – some more size that we've needed absolutely we've had a lot of skill players over the years but we've we really needed some size and finally are are seeing some of that in the in the younger players wall raven the running back once again with bennett baker takes a snap hands off to wall raven up the middle nothing going there and that'll bring up fourth down for the Knights, looks like they'll have to punt it here, and they'll send Silas Ward back on to punt. Uh, put put Leslie in there for a 57-yarder. <laughs> Let's do it. Clock's going to tick under seven minutes as the Knights were able to take off two or three minutes from that clock, give the ball back to the Wildcats. Oh. But doesn't matter. Quick out. Incomplete pass. It'll stop the clock, 321. Careful with that one. That one is close to being backwards pass. Second down and 10. Jackets with a three-man front. Bring five. This gentleman Catch is living yep. across the middle, isn't he? Yep. Blair makes the tackle, but not before. It's a first down and more across midfield. Zayla Matlock. And Carl, he's he's had time to throw the ball on all of yep. these plays. He's he's felt comfortable in the pocket. He's been able to step into his throws, and he's put some on the money. Looks downfield over the middle. Catches made. Tackles made. But first down. That's uh, Barton on that tackle. A little. Comes up a little bit, uh, yeah. bit over here. That was a full contact tackle there. Redskins are in business. They're at the Kingfisher 31-yard line. This Campbell. Time Campbell on the ground. Biggest run of the night. Gets inside the 15 down to the 11. Sternberger has to come up and make the play. Moves the chains again. <laughs> Three and a half quarters, they couldn't move the ball. Yeah. Suddenly, they're the Tennessee Volunteers. Josh Heupel showed up, started calling yep. plays. Got the wind behind his back, and he's ready to go. Motion again. Quick snap. Wide open. Touchdown saving tackle. Jack Sternberger, but we got a holding penalty. Okay, 
Might explain the uh, wide running lane there. Yeah, was, our defensive end was nowhere to be found. He must have been, had a little extra hand check on him. So that pushes it back to the 17 yard line. We're going to jump now to the matchup between the Alva Goldbugs and the Hennessy Eagles, where the score is currently 20 to 28. It's going to be to the right side. Malone tackled. Gunner Carthel on the tackle, but Malone gets you know, enough for the first down. It'll be a first and 10 from the 32. Just got barely enough. Pretty good drive from Alva so far. See if they can capitalize and continue. He escapes, pass, wide open, and he makes Seth miss. Can Andres catch him? No, he can't. A 68 yard touchdown for Alva. Drew Glass. Brandon, not happy. I mean, I, I just don't, I don't get it. here on this near side too. I was looking for a flag down here, but it was thrown up at the far side. Clock starts back running again. As the ball's across the 25, the 27, maybe the 28 yard line. Basically, they need to get to the one-yard line for a first down. Carl's under pressure. Just throws just it, up. it up. This has interception all over it. Or just uh, Knocked down play. by Cooper. Nope. That's Borelli, I think. Yeah, it is Borelli. <laughs> Borelli's like, come on, pass interference on the defense. Offense. <laughs> but it's going to set up. Timeout. Third and forever. McLeod. For the home team, a minute and a half to go in this. We'll keep it right. Like Bethel came in and, and was like, well, let's, we'll let you be elite tonight. <laughs> we, we will try everything we can to, to let you get your special teams rolling tonight. And the Knights have taken full advantage of that. I mean, I don't understand every single that. punt not having a single returner back there is, is completely puzzling to I, me. I'd put all red back absolutely. there is what I would do. It, absolutely. Any, it, just the safety who's in the defense back there, let him run it and just make sure it doesn't get down to the five-yard line. It's just crushing for this team to start inside the 10 every single time. It's, it's tough to see out there. Offense City. Carl finds a little bit of time in the pocket. He's able to hit some receivers for some big plays. He pulled out a couple of trick plays. Tied it up and then Jack Sternberger after the Redskins tied it up, he goes 70 yards on a touchdown run to put the Jackets back up a score. Now we are third and about 26 yards. Carl's got time, throws down the seam, has a man, the catch is made. The tackle is made by Sternberger, so it's going to be the fourth down. Fox running under a minute 15. Yeah, the clock's not the issue for the Redskins. Nope. It's that down the game marker. It's going to be fourth and about four. Cloud has one timeout left, as does Kingfisher. And I think McLeod's going to have to call the timeout. Timeout is called, 40 seconds left. So the ball's right on the five. Redskins need four yards for a first down. They're out of timeouts. What do you do? I. <laughs> I mean, you got to think McLeod is thinking something to throw us off guard right here. 
I would. They've gotten a little. I would watch for number a couple four times. and number three are as far as your receivers. Jackets break the yep. huddle on the far side. They're ready. And they've got Jackets. their personnel. That's Shellstrom. 60, 52. Everybody slapping helmets. Let's go. That's what they're saying. Barton at the corner. And another thing here is don't jump. Don't give up anything uh, cheap. Oh, you had to say that, didn't you? Well, surely they said it in the huddle. Campbell in the backfield with Carl. Fourth down and four. Jacket sealed the win with a stop. Carl's got time. Let's it go. Back of the end zone. End incomplete. Zone incomplete. No flags. I did not see any laundry. Pioneer internet Change over and down. defensive stand for the Jackets, the biggest of the game. Carl had time initially, but then got flushed out of the pocket just a little. And Parker it was, was on his heels. Just enough for him to overthrow his man, and the ball falls incomplete. So the Jackets can get in victory formation as the Redskins are. Out of timeouts. Just don't want to drop too far back, but they can take one knee. We'll see if they do that or if they... Uh, Try to run a play here. Looks to be victory. Sternberger takes the knee, and that should do it. Is going to do it. Came down to the last play. Wow. <laughs> well, for a lot of the game we thought it might. Yep. Then we. So, as we start the fourth quarter, Eagles had the ball third and eight. Titan takes it, and Titan is, I think, gone. Yes, he is. A 45-yard touchdown, exactly what the Eagles needed. His fifth rushing touchdown of the game. This one a bit different than all of them, uh, as the distance of this touchdown is... Can't do math. I, I don't know why I'm so like lost. Um, 37 yards difference between all of his touchdowns and that one. That was a 45 yard rushing touchdown. Before that, it had been 5 1 1 1. I know set for the PAT. It is good, but there is a penalty. And that's. Th what a play by Blake Meek. That I mean, it's the fourth quarter. You would think he's playing both ways the entire game. How does he have enough energy to continue to, to play defense like this? That is incredible. Fourth quarter up 35-0 to zero, nonetheless, while Bethel is trying to run the clock out, and Blake Meek makes a play like that. That's and unbelievable. That just, that just shows you what type of player he is. He's tough as nails. And uh looks like... Looks like Crossings uh, will pitch the shutout 35-0 to zero tonight. Impressive game. And yes, you know, it was. Players rally around stuff like what we just saw from Blake Meek. The Knights are embodying a, a team that's tough as nails. Not just Meek himself, but the team as a whole. And, and another great win for And Titan is in. So the Eagles, a double-digit lead back to 36-26. So we will go to a short break. Eagles, within eight seconds, put up eight points. Prevention, bracing, functional rehabilitation and imaging work seamlessly with his medical and surgical expertise. Get started by going to Diesel Horse Sports and Orthopedics. Let Dr. Matt Diesel Horse get you back on the field. Backing all Oklahoma athletes on the field and off. Support your school's booster club and get your business in front of thousands of potential customers. Talk about a win-win. Advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than $10 a game. Call 405-726-0835 or email adam at squirtle.com right now for more information. Back to school. Now your worries about the kids going over on their data plans are back. Mom and Dad, this is for you. Right now, make the switch to... Ooh, 
Ooh. 36-26. I'm going to go for this you know, same way of kicking off where Luis kicks it as hard as he can when the ball is sideways. And he takes bullets. And it's going to roll inside the 30. Takes it up the middle. Ooh, what a tackle. Mauricio Valles. Spears him into the dirt. Well, the grass, but. Great tackle by Mauricio. And they're going to mark it at the 35, first and 10 for Alva. Alva's kicking into second gear here in the second half. We'll see if they're able to repeat that success here in the fourth quarter. Run up the middle, and he gets solid yardage. But a second and four. Yeah, I mean, the numbers are so hard to see on pink out. And they stay this way, like, for the rest of the season. If you want to continue watching that Alva Hennessy game again, that score right now is 36 to 26. Uh, just starting the fourth quarter. If you want to finish watching that game, you can go to the Hennessy Eagles TV, Alva Goldbugs TV, Squirtle TV, or the Squirtle app. For the rest of our games that have finished up, starting off with our 2A matchup for the game of the week, the Chandler Lions versus the Jones Longhorns. Coach Kevin Witt and the Jones Longhorns are going to pull ahead with a final of 34 to 7 moving them to 5-3 and three on this season. Going down to our other Squirtle game of the week, the Tonquan Buccaneers versus the Hominy Bucks. They were ranked 4-5 and five in Class A, both undefeated going into this district game. And the Hominy Bucks, who are ranked 5, are going to beat the Tonquan Buccaneers, moving them to 8-0 and oh on the season. That final again, 21-27. and 27. Going down to the Washington Warriors, versus the Purcell Dragons. The Warriors, again, are ranked one in Class 2A. Coach Brad Beller and the Warriors are going to win that game 40-7 to for that final. Going down to the Crossings Bethel game that just finished up, the 2A Bethel Wildcats versus the Crossing Christian Knights. Coach Jonathan Keithley and the Knights will move to 6-2 and on the season, beating Bethel 35-0. to Going down to our matchup in 3A, the Kingfisher Yellow Jackets at the McLeod Redskins. The Kingfisher Yellow Jackets and Coach Jeff Myers are going to move to 5-3 and three on the season, beating McLeod 21-14. to 14. And again, we mentioned earlier that the Hinton Minko score, score on that game, the Hinton Comets versus the Minko Bulldogs. The Hinton Comets and Coach Grant Potter are going to move to 5-3 and three on this season also, beating Minko 19-18 to 18 in a close game. And like we talked about at the very beginning or towards the middle of the broadcast at halftime, the B matchup between the Garber Wolverines versus the number one ranked OBA Trojans, that final was 48-0 to after the second half, or after the first half of play. And that's going to wrap it up for the week eight section of your Squirtle Pay Dirt Show. I'm your host, Drew Baker, our producer, Ethan Sunken. We want to thank all of our sponsors and everybody that was texting us updates throughout the games, and we will see you next week.